Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects on Location. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. I'm here in London to visit the Sir John So Museum, which is home to the sarcophagus of Seti I, the 19th dynasty pharaoh who was the father of Ramesses II and was buried in the Valley of the Kings. The Sir John So Museum is located in central London, a 10 minute walk from the British Museum and is free to enter, but time tickets must be booked online. I've linked the website below. It is the house and museum of the British architect Sir John Soane, who lived between 1753 and 1837. He was a professor of architecture at the Royal Academy and collected paintings, sculptures, architectural fragments, models, books, drawings and furniture, and the museum is like an Aladdin's cave of historical artefacts. The most spectacular item he acquired was the sarcophagus of Pharaoh Seti I of the 19th dynasty, and I was given access to film this wonderful artefact, which now lies within a glass case in the museum's basement. This actually made it incredibly difficult to film, because the museum is quite dark but there is natural light directly overhead, so sadly reflections couldn't really be avoided. As you may know, the sarcophagus was discovered in 1817 by Italian explorer Giovanni Belzoni, who tried to sell it to the British Museum, but they declined the £2,000 asking price. Sir John Soane had a great interest in ancient artefacts, so he offered Belzoni the money and he added it to his private collection. It was the most expensive object ever purchased by Soane, and, as of everything inside his collection, this was his most prized possession. Thankfully, the sarcophagus is on display today, 200 years after its discovery by Belzoni, and anyone can view it free of charge, just see the museum's website for details. After being led down to the basement, I reached this small room surrounded by statues, which, as well as the alabaster sarcophagus of Seti I in the centre, also contains a few other ancient Egyptian artefacts. This is one such artefact, which, as the label says, is a wooden mummy case that formerly belonged to the collection of the Duke of Richmond. It lies beneath an arch in the sepulchral chamber next to the sarcophagus of Seti I. It is thought to have been brought to England by Richard Pocock in the 18th century, and examined by the second Duke of Richmond in 1742. It is made of wood, possibly sycamore, and has been dated to around 1200 BC, making it either 19th or 20th dynasty in origin. But who it belongs to is unknown. This is one of two stele that is located close to the sarcophagus, and is made of limestone and dates to some time between the 11th and 13th dynasties, which makes it Middle Kingdom between 2030 and 1640 BC. It shows a man named Senna Eeb, a high steward in the Middle Kingdom, and talks of a royal offering of bread and beer for the car of the sole bearer of Lower Egypt, the overseer of the great house Senna Eeb, now deceased. The second stealer is later, dating to the 22nd dynasty around 900 BC, and is of a similar size and also made of limestone. On the left we see the standing figure of Neni, and on the right is a man offering a vase of perfume in each hand. Below is another person holding a lotus flower. In the inscription, Neni is given the title Chief of Prophets and is described as deceased. The full majesty of the sarcophagus of Seti I can be seen from the balcony above. Under the arch you can see the wooden mummy case previously described, right next to the glass case that displays the museum's prized object. So, what makes this sarcophagus so special? Well, it once contained the mummified remains of one of the most important pharaohs of dynastic history, Seti I of the 19th dynasty. As pharaoh, Seti reigned between 11 and 15 years, and during his time he reconquered many of Egypt's lost territories, boasting numerous military victories. Some of these are commemorated on the front of the Temple of Amun in Karnak. At Thebes, a magnificent funerary temple was built on the west bank of the Nile, and he began work on another stunning temple in Abydos, which was finished by his son, Ramesses the Great. He is also believed to be responsible for the famous Assyrian structure, but as many of you will know, the conventional date is questioned by researchers. 
Seti I is often overshadowed by his son, but he was considered a great, powerful, successful and mighty king by his peers. His tomb in the Valley of the Kings is known as KV-17 and is the longest ever found at 446 feet in length, and the deepest of all the New Kingdom royal tombs. It was the first tomb to feature colourful decorations on every passageway and chamber. When Belzoni discovered the tomb and the sarcophagus, the mummy had been removed, and wasn't found until 1881 in a mummy cachet at Dier el Bari. The sarcophagus on display at the Sir Johnson Museum is huge, carved from one piece of alabaster, and when up close you can see how it is finely decorated on every surface, and includes a human sized image of the goddess Nut on the interior base. When it arrived at the museum, it was pure white in colour, and inlaid with blue copper sulphate. But years of the London climate and pollution have since darkened the alabaster to the buff colour we see today. The inlay material has also disappeared and fallen out due to moisture absorbed into the sarcophagus. But just what are the beautiful, intricate details incised onto it? Well, we are looking at what, in ancient Egyptian culture, is the sun's journey through the underworld. There are at least two versions known, but the one on the Seti I sarcophagus is known by the modern name of the Book of Gates, a funerary text from the New Kingdom. The book narrates the soul's passage into the next world, which corresponds with the journey of the sun through the underworld during the hours of the night. The sarcophagus shows the underworld divided into 12 portions, which are equated to the 12 hours of the night. Each hour is divided from the next by a gate, guarded by snakes and a god or a warder. Before going to the museum, I acquired this fantastic book written by Ernest Alfred Wallace Budge, which is a detailed look at the sarcophagus inscriptions, and obviously, as somebody can write a whole book on the subject, I can only give a general overview in this video. If you get the chance to visit the museum, you will see Osiris in the fifth hour on the outside on the left by the feet, sitting on a throne as Judge of the Dead. On the inside left, near the feet, is the tenth hour, where the monstrous serpent Apophis lies in wait to destroy the sun, but is foiled by the gods and worshippers who surround Ra. They bind Apophis with cords and chains, and a struggle continues into the next hour, when Apophis is finally overcome and Ra is saved. Due to the sarcophagus being inside a glass case, I did find it incredibly difficult to film the details just mentioned, but you can see them all with the naked eye. The book mentioned really is a helpful guide to understand the imagery, with each image and section of the sarcophagus explained in full. The sarcophagus is regarded as one of the most important objects ever discovered in Egypt, and is mentioned in all the studies of the 19th dynasty and all the religious texts of the period. As well as what we see inside the glass case, John Soane also acquired 18 pieces of the broken lid, fragments of which are still relatively white in colour, and the inscriptions and images are still inlaid with the blue colour that is now missing on the sarcophagus. The alabaster lid would have included the sculpted face and headdress of the king, but on its discovery by Belzoni, it was already destroyed. So this has been a very quick look at what is, culturally speaking, one of the most important artefacts ever discovered from New Kingdom Egypt, and is tucked away in a little known museum just 10 minutes away from the British Museum. If you're planning to visit the British Museum anytime soon, be sure to book your free time slot to enter the Sir John Soane Museum and catch a glimpse of this amazing piece of history. I hope you've enjoyed this video, because I'll be going out on location a lot more in 2020, to ancient British stone circles, Neolithic, Iron Age and Roman sites, and hopefully I'll be going abroad to see some of the great ancient wonders of the world firsthand. In a few weeks time I'll be visiting Arbolo Henge and Stone Circle, which is located in Derbyshire in England. The egg-shaped circle contains around 50 large limestone blocks, and has a huge earthen bank around 279 feet in diameter. Two causeways also lead into it. It is one of the best preserved henge monuments in the UK, and is part of a much larger Neolithic complex. Please subscribe to the Ancient Architects channel, so you don't miss more videos on location in 2020. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.